I'm Pastor Gary Wilkerson. For those of you that are new here, we welcome you. As uh, Pastor Adam has just said to you, we're thrilled that you're uh, here in the house with us today. We're pray praying that God will bless his word. We have a little bit of a special event going on with the, today. Today we are uh, sharing our heart and our vision for what God is doing. I want to pray first. I want to ask the Holy Spirit to come into this room. I know he resides in our hearts as believers, but he manifests his presence in various ways, in various times. He, he shows himself strong in certain events and gatherings, and we want that today. We want him to be here. I want, I want the words that I have to say to this congregation today to, to honor God and to be sober and holy. When it comes to sharing vision and when it comes to speaking of the life of the church, it's very easy for those in leadership to get into the flesh and begin to try to hype things up and to describe things in a way that people kind of catch the vision and feel all woohoo about it. And I'm glad for excitement and anticipate like guitars all excited about what I'm about to preach today. Slain in the spirit guitar. Uh, but but there, comes, there comes a time where, where that's totally insufficient. The church can't, can't thrive off of our natural excitement. It has to go into that holy moment of God and, and where God's word is, is lifted up in a way that, that blesses him and, and, and exalts his, his name. So, Father, we pray now in the name of Jesus that you would give your messenger fire words from heaven even as we discuss the vision of the church, God, I pray that it would not be uh, dry. I pray that it, that it would not be hype. I pray that it would be holy, God, that, that, that it would truly penetrate our hearts, bring even conviction, transformation. Lord, oftentimes when there's that yearly sermon, uh, the, the state of the union, so to speak, the state of the church, it, uh, it, it's, it's just sort of some excitement. But Lord, we want to go beyond that into something that, that does still transform our hearts and, and we catch the vision. And what's going on in the church then is it, we, we catch it in our heart too, God. So the blessing that's on the house becomes the blessing on our house. And we want that, Jesus. We thank you for blessing the house called the Springs Church. And we're asking for that, that rain that's falling on us would fall on every family, every single member, every child that's just gone upstairs, every baby that's still here in this sanctuary. Every single one of us would receive the blessing of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. And everybody said together, Amen. Amen. I want to share the title of the message here today is God is doing something bigger than us. Amen. God is doing something bigger than you, bigger than me bigger than us. There is a preaching from books of the Bible, line by line, verse by verse, called expository teaching. It takes the text and it describes the topic of that text verse by verse. It's my favorite kind of preaching. I can't wait in a few weeks or certainly by the first of the year to tackle another book of the Bible. Looks like we're going to go into one of the bigger books, Luke or something like that, and go verse by verse, chapter by chapter. I love with all my heart expository preaching because it forces us as a church not just to discuss our, 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 uh, our own desires, our own things that we really like to, to illuminate, but it gives us the calling of God to, to, to speak on topics that we may not ever speak about unless we were following the word verse by verse, line by line. It's called expository preaching. There's another type of preaching that's called topical preaching. And a topical preaching is where the pastor usually gets up and, you know, you know some pastors are like evangelists, and so every week, you know, every three out of four weeks, their sermon is on evangelism. And some pastors are intercessors, and so three or four out of the weeks out of the month, it's a sermon. It could be, you know, they could be talking about any issue in the Bible, and somehow it turns into a message on intercession. Have you ever noticed that before? And some of you may notice my own pet peeve about radical discipleship and, and, a, and a, an absolute surrender to Christ. It seems to weave its way in almost every message. So, so that's called topical preaching. And then there's also preaching about needs of people, hurting people. It's called needs-based preaching. There's three different types there. with expository, topical, and need-based preaching. And there's another type that's called vision casting. It's about the needs, not of people, but the needs of the church and the vision of the church and the calling of the church. My favorite types are expository preaching to a needs-based people. I love to preach that way. And God has given me the freedom today to not preach that way. <laughs> and to take me the opposite way and talk in a topical message about God doing something bigger than us with a vision-casting call. 
Now, here's why I prefer expository preaching to, and, and to the needs of the people is because it touches our lives. It transforms us where we live. And I love to see the Holy Spirit work in power that way. But God is calling me today, however, to preach a, a topical message on the needs and the growth and the vision and the calling and His desire for us as a body to move together. God, we want to hear today what God is calling us as a church to move into, to believe for, and to expect from Him. And the reason I'm hesitant oftentimes to preach that is there are so many people that come into a church and they're hurting and their personal stories are a story of pain and sorrow and suffering. And they're hungry for a word from the Lord and hungry for that personal growth. And so that's, that's the reason I like preaching that way, but the reason I am also thrilled and encouraged and enthused and overwhelmed and excited about preaching this message today is because the Holy Spirit said to me very clearly this week, as go the church, so goes the people. And if you have a healthy, holy, on fire, dynamic, spirit-filled, soul-winning, poor reaching out to church of Jesus Christ, then the people inside become what that church is all about. So the lives of the individual, the, the hurting, the needs, are transformed when the church functions as Acts 2 and Acts 4 and other portions of Scripture tell us the church should truly function. When people and families and even a city see what God is doing on a bigger level than our own needs and our own life, that rise, raises faith in our hearts. It gives us encouragement. It stirs us and rises us up and calls us to things in our life personally as well. In other words, when you see miracles taking place in your church, you'll know that miracles can take place in your life. When you see God doing the supernatural in the community of believers, then you know God can also do the supernatural in your own life. The health of the church speaks to the health of the individual. And so today we are unashamedly, unabashedly going to call forth a vision from this church, call forth God to do mighty miracles in our midst, to believe that what we've seen so far later on, we will say, is insignificant, is small in the eyes of what we see God do. He has greater things are yet to come in this city, as the song we sing says. Greater things are yet to come in this city, and we believe God with all our heart. And also, the reason I'm encouraged to preach this message today is, that, is that, that there comes a time where God calls us to take our eyes off of ourselves, to, to take a moment to just say, I'm going to stop thinking about myself, my worries, my cares, my needs, my troubles, my trials, my tribulations. This morning, I'm going to put my eyes on Jesus, and I'm going to say He can do great and mighty things in my life and in my church and in my city. This past few weeks... Uh, I've been a little bit worried about this building situation. It's a big building. Have you ever seen it? It's, it's, it's big. We're, for those of you who don't know, we're buying a, a, we've bought a building, um, and, it's, and it's huge. I mean, I thought this room was too big for us when we first got it. It's obviously not anymore. I think the same thing's going to happen there, but, but it's caused me some angst. It's caused me a little bit of, and then, and then it's expensive as well, so I'm thinking, man, that's a, that's a, that's a lot. And then we, we started saying, okay, I'm just going to, I'm just going to believe God for, you know, the miracles, and it's going to happen, and and, you know, so we just mentioned that it's, it's time to give, it's time to give, and we raised a grand total of about $2,500 uh, for the renovations of the building on the inside that's going to cost us, we need to raise about $300,000, $350,000 more, and I'm thinking, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, you ever do that before? You ever had that, oh, Lord, prayer? And the Lord just as clearly as anything said, do you want to wake up every morning and you want to go to bed every night caring about your own worries and your own fears and your own anxieties? Or do you want to go to bed at night with the joy of the Lord? Amen. And do you want to wake up in the morning with everything giving thanks? Amen. And so I just started saying, thank you for the building. Thank you that you're going to meet the need. Thank you for the souls that are going to be saved in that place. Thank you for the children that are going to come and glorify Christ there. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God, for what you're doing in our midst. I want to encourage you in your life right now to begin to give thanks to the Lord in all things. I was with my father earlier this week, and he and my mom are getting to be 80 and are starting to face some of those trials and tribulations that you face when you hit that age. You saw him if you were here a few weeks ago, months ago, and, and he's beginning to tremble. His knees are not as strong. Last time he preached, he had to sit down. And, and so when I'm with him, I see uh, here's a man of faith who's believed God for great and mighty things, and yet there was some anxiety about his future. And the Lord just told me, he said, 
Dad, I have a prayer for you to pray, and it's two words, and it's just this, thank you. Thank you. And the joy of the Lord came all over him, and he and I began to celebrate together, just saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for 80 wonderful years, and if you give me five more, thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I know, and he's, and he's praying, I know my wife is, is getting older and she's in pain and, and there's certain things that are happening in the body and in the mind, but thank you for those 50 years together of a glorious marriage. Thank you for a wonderful family. Thank you for a ministry that has reached thousands of people around the world and his, his countenance changed. Today, your countenance can change if you'll just take that Holy Spirit prayer and just say, thank you, God, no matter what. And begin to, that thank you prayer begins to cause us to take our eyes off of ourself and begins to put it on the glory and the power and the majesty of Jesus. And there's, we realize in saying, thank you, Jesus, that he is in control. And we realize in saying, thank you, Jesus, that there's nothing impossible for the Lord. There's no situation in your life too difficult that the Lord can't meet it. And we want to thank the Lord that he has allowed us in this building, in this church, in this community of faith, to be a part of something that's bigger than ourselves. And God is on the move, and God is doing something grand and glorious beyond us, and yet that affects us individually. On Wednesday morning, Pastor Adam, uh, excuse me, on, on Wednesday morning, uh, Pastor Adam and Pastor Patrick and myself went downtown to an to a office, a, a real estate office, and they brought out these pieces of paper, and, and, and it had the name of the Springs Church on it, and it had an address over there. I don't even know what the address is. That's the first time I even saw the address. And I said, is you sure that's the building we're buying? Yes, the lawyer was there. He said, yes, that's the building we're buying. And, and that was, it's called Auto Mall Drive uh, Expo Center, Phil Long Ford Expo Center. And, and, and those weeks of, you know, breathing a little heavy and losing a little bit of sleep and then coming to that place of thank you, I was able to sit at that table in perfect peace, in perfect peace. No, no buyer's remorse. I don't know about you, but I'm a little bit stingy. I'm a little bit cheap. I go buy, I'll go to the Gap and buy a new shirt at the Gap, and I'm driving home, and I think, I should have not bought that shirt. How stupid. I'm, I could have used that money for missions. I, you know, I have buyer's remorse on everything, except food. <laughs> uh, and so, and so I, I was expecting, I was expecting, uh, uh, you know, here we are, we're sitting down with my friends around this table, and, 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 and to sign a piece of paper, that's just a piece of paper, but it represents what God can do, what God is doing. It represents God is doing something bigger than us. And on, on Wednesday morning, we sat down and we signed those papers. And, and, as, and in signing those papers, I could see in, in, a, in, a, in a spiritual vision, in my mind's eye, so to speak, I could see thousands of people coming to meet Jesus Christ at the altars of that church building that we're gaining possession of. Thousands and thousands of people coming to know Jesus. And some of you are saying, well, that's really not what I want. I want a small church. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But, but I tell you what, if you have a lost husband or wife, a lost child, a lost aunt or uncle, or your grandfather, your grandmother, if they're lost and you bring them into that building and they come to that altar and get saved, you're going to be thanking God for a church that's growing yes. and a church that's reaching out to the lost. So thousands will be saved, and it's going to create more space for these children that we see. Now, now we'll, we'll talk about that later, a little bit over 200 children coming now, and, 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 and this is a secret, don't tell anybody, but we're a little bit overmaxed upstairs there. We don't call the fire marshal anybody. We don't want them to chase out our children, but we're going to see more room for our children to, to, and more families that are going to come and say, wow, uh, I love the glorious work that God's doing with our children. It has in, in uh, capacity. Here we are, we're signing this piece of paper, and it represents 40,000 square feet, about four times bigger than the space we have here, 40,000 square feet just set apart for what we call in this church mercy ministries. Ministry to the poorest of the poor, the most brokenhearted people, the most trial, going through the most difficult trials and tribulations, people in crisis, the most lost, the most sinful, like the young lady who got saved. She was, she was sleeping out in front of our church office and our staff, instead of you know, asking her to move because you know, you're going to not represent our good orderly church very well, we let her sleep there, we brought her food, we prayed over, and about two weeks ago.